Hello fellow music nerds. Today we're going to talk about odd time signatures and I'm going to show you a couple of ways to make those time signatures feel a little more comfortable. Man, I cannot see a thing with these glasses on. I mean, it's one. Friends and neighbors, welcome back to the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you had an amazing week. I hope you're all doing very well and staying safe. Uh, today, we're talking about odd time signatures. And I know that this is a very contentious subject for many of you. Some of you really love playing odd time signatures and some of you really can't stand playing odd time signatures. But, uh, Whatever side of the fence you might be on, uh, I'm here to help make those uh, rhythms feel a little bit more comfortable. So let's see if we can make that happen today. For me, the thing about playing on time signatures is I'm always trying to hear the largest phrase. So I want to talk about a couple of different ways that we can do that. Now, the first way that I like to do this is to think in terms, as I said, of the largest phrase. So what does that mean? If I'm playing something that's in 5-8, then what I really want to do is think more in 5-4. So let's say I have a simple bass line that's in 5-8 that uses every note of that subdivision. So 5 eighth notes. Here I have Anna 1 set at uh, 184 BPM. Huh? That's 5-8 for you. So check this out. Check out this rhythm. So here I have my 5-8, and I'm gonna play a very simple bass line that uses all five of those eighth notes. Two, three, four, five. So you can hear I'm playing this 5-8 phrase and I'm using every note of the bar, but I don't want to think in terms of that 5-8 phrase. Watch what happens when I count the quarter note against this same bass line. I'm gonna slow it down and just play it in the air without Anna 1, who's a little too fast right now. Um, but check this out. If I play one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now check this out. If I count the quarter note against that, what I get is a two bar phrase. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, one. Now that might be a little bit tricky at first. So here's what I suggest you do. If you have a metronome, that has um, odd time signatures built into it, then you can just try to count the quarter note against that rhythm, like so. So now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to count every other beat of the bar so that I'm counting quarter notes. Or an easier way to do it would be to count one and, or just count the eighth note subdivision uh, for every beat, like this. One and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five. And then you can take away the upbeats to give you one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Immediately it feels much more relaxed. And I know where the five eight is going to be against this five four pulse. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. And now, So you, 
you can hear what's happening there is I can free myself up a little bit and start to play with the rhythm a little more now that I'm thinking in terms of the quarter note instead of the eighth note. Because if I was just thinking, then I would probably play to that pulse, which can sound super rigid and not very good. So by counting the quarter note against my eighth note pulse, I immediately get a much more relaxed feel in the rhythm. I hope that makes sense. I will demonstrate it one more time. This is a great exercise for any musician. Doesn't matter if you're bass player, trombone player, flute player, vocalist. Try this exercise. Here's how it goes. One and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then, not only can I just play one bass line, but I can also practice tunes this way. So there I was just playing Autumn Leaves, simple standard that most people know. Um, but you can do this with almost any tune. And not only can you do it with almost any tune, you can do this with almost any time signature. Let's take the same tempo and this time what I'm going to do is turn my five into a seven. Here's how my rhythm will change. I'll do the same thing and count the eighth note pulse or the eighth note subdivision against the pulse that's being set by the metronome. And then I immediately get into the quarter note from there. Check it out. So here I have my seven eight pulse. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the quarter note using the eighth note subdivision on every beat of this pulse, which gives me this sound. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. And then check this out. So you can hear that midpoint of my quarter note pulse and. So one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven. That and is the second bar of seven, eight. One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven. So I want to be able to feel where that falls almost in a natural way, in the same way that we can feel four beats go by in a 4-4 four, four time signature, we should be able to feel this space as well. That's the goal. And. So, one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven. So this is going to be the exercise. Hold on, Anna. This is gonna be the exercise. Just Put on your metronome and try the different time signatures. Try five, seven, nine, eleven, what have you, thirteen, go as high as you want. Start by counting the, the quarter note pulse using the eighth note subdivision, the way that I demonstrated. And then what you can do is just try to hear that midpoint. And then once you get that feeling in the body, 
then you can try to experiment just by even just by playing one note you don't have to go in and start playing autumn leaves right off the bat but if you want to get a deeper understanding you can start by, by playing just one note four five six seven one and then really getting an understanding of that pulse one two three four and five six seven one two three four and five six seven that's the beginning and then maybe you can try to move around a little bit let's say i take the g minor pentatonic scale and then just start to play that quarter note pulse against my seven eight five six seven one two three four five six seven one two three four five six now see if you can try to catch that and So you can see what's happening there. Now I'm still feeling the quarter note pulse, but when I switched and picked up on the and, what happened was I was feeling the quarter note still, but really playing to the notes of that second bar so that it still sounds like I'm playing the seven eight, but I'm thinking in a larger space of time. And the more you're able to do that, the more relaxed you can make these kinds of time signatures feel. So I hope that helps. Huh? Give that a try. And um, if you like what you just saw in this lesson, then please do click like and share it with as many people as you possibly can because this is a great exercise for any musician. Uh, and I highly recommend adding this to your practice routine if you're working on odd time signatures and, and grooves that have just a different sort of time frame or rhythmic structure. I hope you enjoyed that little video. I'm going to talk a little bit more about time signatures, odd time signatures, uh, in the future. But I will leave you with that for now. Once again, if you like this video, please click like, share, subscribe to the channel, uh, donate to the channel if you are in a position to do so. Every donation is greatly appreciated and no donation is too small or too large. I will leave the link in the description box below and um, and say hi just say what's up in the comments section if you have any questions I'm more than happy to answer them I'm not able to get to everyone's comment but I do the best that I can to um, to reciprocate the love so um, if you do feel like saying hi please don't hesitate and uh, and hopefully I will respond and I think that's gonna be it for this week my friends and neighbors i thank you as always for visiting me in the brownstone my name is rich brown and i will see you in the next video peace where are my glasses